Hey, my name is Eddie Wooten, and this is my wife, Donna Wooten. And we've been here probably close to 40 years. Connie and Michael Mabe in 1979 stopped at our little apartment and invited us to Calvary Baptist Church over on Spain Hill Road. Probably about 35, 36 years ago, we pulled in this parking lot. And, uh, uh, you know, I had, we had three kids, one probably two, and one uh, four and one five probably in that, in that range. And uh, I remember Greg Tucker specifically meeting us in the parking lot and, uh, you know, helping us get kids in class, and, you know, just a real friendly church. We've been at Calvary since about 1992, so that's about 30 years, give or take. This will be my fourth building project. Okay, when we when we first started, came here, you know, it was the building here without the wings on it. The best I can remember, and you know, the first building project was actually was the school and in, in behind the church. Me, uh, Greg Tucker and I uh, had spread gravel up at the parking lot where the parking lot is now at the school. I remember Gray Franchler did the grading up there and, and uh, me and Greg and, and you know several church members uh, after the building was up we've done the finished grading and sowing the grass and uh, graded out the ball field. We came when the church at, at the old location just had one wing um, and we came and while we were there, we added the, the, the wing onto the right side of the church as you're facing it from the road. Um, and almost as soon as we got it done, we had it filled up. And we knew, we knew fairly quickly that we were gonna need something bigger. We were here during the, each wing as it was added on the, on the church. Built that second wing, we immediately filled it up. Uh, we knew we, if, if the church was gonna continue to grow, we needed a larger space. Uh, so we began praying and, and, and trusting God to provide us with um, the facilities we needed to continue to grow His work. Well, of course, one of the first things you need anytime you're doing a building project is money. The church just, just opened up and, and was really generous. And uh, as a result of that, we, we accumulated the money that we needed um, through the sacrifice of the, of the folks to, to begin looking at, at how we could expand our location and our facilities. Once, once we had uh, purchased this property here, uh, it was very obvious that there was a lot of work that needed to be done. It had been sitting idle for several years. And then we came and, and had a, a huge Saturday work day. And um, one of our goals was for people to be able to drive by and say, yeah, there's something going on there. And when we got done that Saturday, you could you could tell something had been done. You know, this, these buildings had never saved nobody, or yeah, you know, they never will. But you know, the, the the work that's been involved in and getting the people in, getting the buildings that people worked hard to do. When you look 50 years down the road and see you know the missionaries all over the world and, and the people that's been saved, uh, it's it's just a uh, it's just a tremendous blessing to think, think about what, what this church is. Uh, God has let this church produce, you know, over, over the years, really. You know, I've lived by two philosophies in my life. My goal is, number one, to influence people for the Lord. Everywhere I go, whatever I do. The second thing is, is to invest in the things of the Lord. Uh, treasures, the Bible says to lay up treasures in heaven. And, you know, I want to get to heaven and I want people to come up to me and I want them to say to me, I thank you for giving that I could come to this church and I could learn and my family could grow up here. I mean, this, this is a sacred place. So what better facility to invest in as far as your treasures? The Lord only asks you for your heart to be obedient. And if you can trust the Lord with your heart for your eternal salvation, why can't you trust the Lord with your finances? People don't understand. They think, oh, well, you know, if I give, then I'll get a check in the mail. It's not always a check in the mail. It's, it's what God is, can do through your life, through the blessings He can give you. And I mean, Don and I talked about this. You can't outgive God. God's blessed me, you know, multiple times for it. It's, it's uh, you know, he, he's, he's a, 
he's, he's been a whole lot more faithful than I have. 21 years later, here we are, and uh, looking to grow again. So God has blessed us, and, and we're thankful that, that he's allowed us to be a part of that. The next 40 years, I'll be in heaven, but what influence is my life and my investments, my tithes and offerings going to have on those people that are coming through those doors? That's just my heart. I mean, my intention today was just come to show people my heart to maybe try to get them to understand that they need to give. They need to invest monetarily into this work.